What's going on DMG clan today? I'm gonna teach you guys how to play Nintendo 3DS emulation with Citra MMJ using the DNA duo and the new feature to utilize the second screen that you see here. So let me level up your gaming knowledge with the last three days of 2024 even more. That's right, mobile gamers. So today I am going to show you guys how to set up finally Citra for Android using the dual screen function that has been recently implemented into Citra MMJ. That is now right now we have like line 3DS out there and Azura or something like that. I don't know why they changed the name to whatever that is. And the thing is about those versions is they are the later versions of Citra, whereas this one that I'm about to show you is one of the older versions of Citra that was fully optimized or more optimized for Android back in the day. And now the developer has still been working on it, luckily. And they did a good job with actually adding this feature that you could use today if you wanted to, or if you wanted to pre-order the DNA Duo that you see here. Now this is a prototype version of the DNA Duo if you don't know what that is. It's basically a portable display that literally becomes part of your device's DNA. As you can see here, basically it connects to customized adapters that allow it to be connected to whatever device you connected to and then you could hinge it closed if you wanted to and like i said this is a prototype but you could hinge it closed and leave it like this if you wanted to and leave it connected and not have to disconnect it at any time and utilize the feature that i'm about to show you in this video so go pre-order it now you can use code i love 3ds over on my website, dnamobilegaming.com, and pre-order it for your Android Odin 2, or your Steam Deck, or your Asus Rogue Ally, or even your Legion Go. And I am going to be implementing more adapters coming very soon, as a lot of you have asked me, oh, what about the adapter for the Zhexiao Steam Deck case, or stuff like that. More adapters are coming, but I thought, to keep it simple for now, to get it out there with adapters that actually fit these devices so that you can actually play 3DS, DS, and Wii U emulation on the go using a portable display that becomes part of your device's DNA. So with all that part out of the side, <laughs> yes, I've kind of ran my own little ad on my own product. We are going to walk on over to Chrome and subscribe to the channel before you do that because I show a lot of this kind of stuff on the channel and I have shown a lot of this kind of stuff on the channel and you're going to jump over and type in Citra MMJ as you can see here Citra MMJ for Android so you're going to be looking for one that is called Wei Yao or Wei Yu or something like that I don't know his name exactly or their name exactly but it's the GitHub repository for Wei Yao you're gonna click on that and you're gonna navigate down, navigate down, and there's one right now as of today. It's three weeks old. Now this version of it, for some reason, does not work for the Retroid Pocket Edition or any of the Mali GPU devices for whatever reason. Not sure what they did. I know how they implemented Media Projection Library into this is what this is called, but I'm not sure why it's not working for non-Snapdragon devices. It works on this device, it works on the Retroid Pocket Mini, and I'm getting the Retroid Pocket 5 soon, and I'm going to test it on there, and if you see a video about that already at this point, then maybe there's a video on the channel for that. So you're going to download the APK version, not the Antutu or the Storage Access or the Storage Access Antutu version. The Odin 2 is pretty powerful, and it's able to play a lot of 3DS games. Now you're going to click on open. Now if a little dialog window pops up like this, open with package installer, or if it says hey, you need to enable this permission to install or basically sideload any applications, then do that. Now click on always, click install, and click open. Now you're going to click allow just like this, and you're going to be presented with a little area right here to actually add your game library. This is not, I'm going to repeat this, is not a video about how to get your games. You need to dump your own games using your hacked 3DS or 2DS XL console or any 2DS console like you see here. Yes, I own multiple 2DSs and 3DSs and stuff like that, and that's not the point of what I'm showing you here today. I love emulation more than playing on something like this because something like this is very small and cramping in my hands, and after like half an hour gaming on this thing, 
with the small display and the low-end graphics i just get sick of it and put it aside maybe when i was younger i didn't mind it but now that i have this thing and my steam deck and all those other devices i love playing emulation or any of these consoles on devices that i love to play on that all aside click on i add folders to library and a little window is going to pop up like this. Now, my 3DS games are located on an external SD card, so I'm going to click these dots until I get to that external SD card. Go all the way down to my storage. Go to my actual SD card. It should be just a randomized number and letters. And you're going to go to your emulation folder or wherever your ROMs are located. Mine are in my emulation, ROMs, and N3DS. And I'm going to click OK. Now, all of your games should load up in here. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to click this little icon that looks like a motherboard or a microchip of some sort, and you're going to navigate inside there. I'm going to change my screen layout to single screen. My internal resolution, I can go up to 3x resolution for most games. I'm going to turn off show FPS because I don't care about seeing that. And you could change a couple other features if you want to. Uh, enable memory reuse and um, uh, enable CPU usage limit actually helps a lot. Speed limit percentage, don't even worry about that. Enable in-game settings, that's up to you. If you want to do that, that means that if you set up a setting for a specific game, it'll actually grab that information or those configurations the next time. But on the most part, like I said, the Odin 2 is pretty powerful. And I like to turn on new 3DS mode. Make sure enable CPU JIT is turned on. Your emulation region doesn't really matter. Theme is default, Your whatever you want to do. Audio output is QBEB. And I like to turn on audio stretching because some games actually benefit from this, but it does increase some latency, so it's up to you. So I just leave it off on the most part. Now, the next thing I like to do is go into my three dots, input binding. Now, because we have the Odin 2 here, I like to use the back buttons. And what I like to use those for is to swap the screens. You could swap up and down like the top and bottom screens if you wanted to. So I'm going to use my M1 which is code 98. This is my M1 button that's on the left-hand side. And if I wanted to, you know, show the settings, for example, I could use my M2 button. And all the rest of this is already pre-configured. I know it says, hey, what do you want to change this to? It's all up to your preference. If you want to change these buttons, you wanted A to be B and whatever and so on and so forth. Otherwise, you could just click this and clear it. It'll automatically set it based off of what controller profile you are using at the time. I am using the Xbox controller profile right now, but I'm going to use the Odin one because that makes more sense for the fact of how the A, B, X, and Y is laid out for 3DS. Click back. Now we're going to navigate into one of these games for a second. So I'm going to go into Donkey Kong Country Returns. I'm going to click the back button on my device. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to turn on uh, the hide input buttons. And I'm going to scroll this all the way down, which is the controller opacity and the scale all the way down to zero. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Now you're going to go all the way down to the bottom where it says screencast and you're going to click on single screen. Now you're going to go to the layout and single. I don't know why it doesn't grab the default layouts for whatever reason. And that's what I'm going to do right here, but it does save the resolution. Not sure why the layout's not saving properly, but that's not a big deal. And that is about it. Now we're gonna click back. Now you can see I can switch the screens using the back button. But the thing is, as soon as I attach the DNA Duo and connect the USB-C cable. Now this isn't the finalized USB-C cable or the finalized design or anything like that. This is just the prototype still, the one that I've been showing everybody a lot this entire time. Yes, this connects via USB-C. Yes, the battery is great on the AYN Odin 2. But as you can see here, it's not going to do the configuration properly right away. It's just going to mirror it. But you need to go back in, go back to default, go to single screen, and go back out of the game, and then go back in the game, go to settings, go to single screen, <laughs> and then it'll do the actual proper configuration. Again, this is still new. This could be something that you know he needs to fix or they need to fix down the road. And there we go, we saved those configuration settings, and now we can play dual screen emulation properly with a portable display that connects to your device like the DNA Duo. Go pre-order your DNA Duo today. I hope this helped you figure this out. Yes, this does work if you want to use like the screencast method as well, which is basically what they called this, a screencast. But right now... 
this is awesome because the DNA Duo was designed for this main purpose and it's now on Android as well. So now we have Drastic for Android, which also has dual screen functionality. And we have Citra, which is the original 3DS emulator, emulator for Android that is able to use dual screen functionality. Now I'm gonna warn you, one big thing is that some games look really weird. So I'm gonna exit this game. I'm gonna go into New Super Mario Bros, for example. Not sure why, not sure what the issue is here. I think it's something to do with his code. I think he just threw this in really quickly. But the top screen, you're gonna see it in a second. It's gonna look like it's shifted. So as, <laughs> as you can see here, it looks like it's shifted down. It's got like some sort of black bezel around the left and top side. So I think that the developer needs to fix something with this. I'm not sure if there's some configuration file inside the actual Citra emulator folder, which is in your files, in your main directory, inside of Citra. There it is right there, Citra MU. Oops. Now there should be some, oh, that's not the right one either. Citra MU. Now I'm not sure if any of these configuration files have specific layouts so there's input layouts and all that kind of stuff i'm not sure if he's changed something in there specifically to make it look like that but it's still playable it's able to be played on a second display which is freaking cool and yes you can use like the screencast option for the time being if you wanted to which is up here in your menu of your odin 2 and cast your second display to your tv and have your actual bottom display if you have a really good router your tv is connected via hard connection to the ethernet cable you should get at least decent, you know, signal to your TV. That's it, guys. Thought I'd warn you about that last part just because I know some people might ask that in the comments section. And if you didn't make it this far and you asked that question, then I'm just going to tell you to just look at the video because I've answered it. Any other questions you have about the DNA Duo, jump over to the questions and facts page because I've answered a lot of the majority of the questions that a lot of people ask all the time over there. Or you can ask it in the comment section as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I'm going to go play some new Super Mario Bros. Not on this world because I backed up my saves that I had on here because I have been playing on this a lot. And enjoy playing 3DS emulation the way it should be played in 2024 and beyond. Only one more week left of 2024, by the way. See you next time. I love you all. And uh, actually, it's not even a week. It's like three days. Bye-bye!